Hello, in the next tutorial we will show you how to edit the front page of your website. Upon logging in and being greeted with your dashboard, we will use our mouse cursor to highlight the pages section and we will simply select all pages. Next we will allow the page to load and it will display all the available pages currently on the website. Next we can scroll through until we locate the front page, in this case the KZN Teachers Christian Fellowship or we are able to search for it in the search bar at the top right. Once we, have hi once we have located the page, we will hover over it and we will see additional options appear. Here we can edit, quick edit, trash, view or edit with Elementor. Please note that we will select edit with Elementor as this is the page builder that we are currently using. As you can see, the page is loaded, and we will first use our mouse cursor to navigate across the site. As you can see, while we navigate across, different sections will be highlighted in blocks, as you can see here. To make this simple, there are three main elements that we will be working with. The first will be an entire section. As you can see here, I'm hovering over the Edit Section button, and it displays which section we are going to edit by the thin blue border. We will select Edit, and we will have seen that the bar on the left hand side will appear. Here we will start with the layout where all the content is placed. Here we can change the content of the section, in this case we have set it to full width. We can change the column gap, the height, the vertical alignment, and the overflow. EA Parallax and Particles is not needed for this. In the structure section, we can see that we currently have the section set to 100, meaning that there is only one column in the section. Moving on to the styling side, we can choose to edit the background. Here we can either choose to have a normal background, or to have the background appear when hovering over the section. Here we will simply select choose our background type, and it will expand. Here we can select a color, and we can use the bar below to choose a color we wish. Please note that the color is not changing, as we have an image sitting on top of this. I will set this back to default, and we will move on. Instead of a background color, we can also choose to have a background image. By selecting Choose Image, a new window will appear. By default, it will have taken us to the media library. These are all the images that are already loaded on the website. We are also able to upload a new file by selecting Upload Files. Here we will select Select Files and we will navigate our computer until we find the image we are wanting to upload. In this case, I have gotten an image ready. We will select Vision 1 as the image and we will select Open. As you can see, it is busy loading the image and it is now complete. Once it has finished loading, at the bottom right we will simply select Insert Media and the media will be inserted. Please note again that we are not seeing this as we currently have an image on top of this. We will now remove this image by simply selecting the Remove option. But before I do that, we are able to change the position of the background image, the attachment settings, the repeat options, as well as the size of the image. Next, I will now remove the image, and we will move forward. We have now come to our background overlay. By selecting this, you can see that we currently do not have an overlay inserted. To add one, we will simply select Classic, and the window will expand. Here we are able to again choose a color we wish to use, which I will now set back to default. Or again, we can choose an image. By selecting the Select Image, you will see we are taken to the media library again with our latest image uploaded. We will select this image and we will say insert. Again, it gives us additional options to change the positioning of the image, the attachment settings, the repeat options, as well as the size options and the hypocrisy. Next, I will remove this image and we will continue. Moving on to the border, here we are able to add a border. 
please note that since we are editing the section, this border will only apply to the section highlighted in the blue. To show you this, we will select border solid. And as you can see, it has already inserted the default black border. Next, we can choose to increase the width of the border as well as the color of the border. We are also able to choose to increase the border radius, which you will see is the corners of the border, rounding it off. I will now set that back to default and we will continue. Please note that we are also able to insert a border that only appears when we hover. By selecting the hover side, again we will choose our border type, we will choose our width, and we will choose our color. As you can see, the border is not displayed as we are not hovering over that section. Once we hover, the border becomes active. We will now set that back to default and continue. Next, we have come to our shape divider. By selecting this, we are given an option to add a shape divider to the top or to the bottom of the section. We will simply choose our type and as you can see, it again gives us further options. Here we can change the color and as you can see it very slightly changed the top color above the section as this is the top divider we are editing. We're also able to change the width and the height. However, please note that you're not able to see this as we currently have the image set above it. Therefore we will set this back to default and we will move on to the topography. This is all the colors for the text which is already set and you will not need to change. The advanced section is already set up and you do not need to fill it with this as it is set up for the way we want the website to work. Now that we are happy with the section that we have edited, we will move on to the next element. In this case, it will be a column. Columns are shown by the dotted black border and as you can see here, we will simply select edit column and again the window on the left will appear. In our layout settings, we can change the column width, so in other words we can make this column only 50% and so forth. Next we can choose our vertical alignment as well as our horizontal alignment. Moving on to the styling section, which is the looks of the column, we can change the background type. Here we have the option to choose normal or hover, and by selecting the type the, bar, the options will expand below. Again, we can choose the color we wish to use as a background or an image. I will set that back to default and we will continue. Next, we have come to the background overlay. And again, here we can choose the normal overlay or the overlay that comes into effect only when hovering over the column. Again, we will choose our background type. And here we can choose a color or we can choose an image. Again, please note that we are not able to see these changes as we have got the image sitting in front of it. Moving forward, we have come to our border which is the same as before. We will simply select our border type. We will choose our width. We can choose a color. And so forth. We will now remove this. And we will continue. Again, we have come to our topography which you do not need to fill with as this is already set up for you. Lastly, again, our advanced tab you do not need to worry about, as this is set up for you. Now that we are done with our column, we are going to edit the last element, which will be a widget. A widget is shown with a blue border as well. Here, I will simply highlight the slides, which is the widget we are going to edit. By selecting Edit, the bar on the left will appear. Here you can see that we are currently editing the widget titled Slides. As you can see, we will start with our slides, and our first slide is titled Why TCF at Schools. By selecting this, the window will expand. Here we will start with our background, where we can choose a background color, as well as an image, in this case, a nice image of all the members. Next, we will choose the size of the image, and we will see that it will change. As you can see there, I'll set that back to cover and it fills the entire section nicely. Next, we can choose to have a background overlay, which in this case is a, simply a dark gray. Here we can choose to change the color to wherever we wish. 
I'm going to set that back to default. And we will continue. Next, in our content section, we will see we have the title YTFC at Schools. If I was to edit this, we will see that the changes will happen live. I will now remove those dots and we will continue. Next, we have come to the main text area. As you can see here, we are able to edit it again and it will change live, as seen there. We will now remove those dots and we come to the button text, which is seen here, which we are also able to change live. Next, we will insert a link for the button. So when, when users click this button, they will be taken to the About Our Fellowship page, as seen here. And that link is applied on the entire slide. Lastly, we come to our style section, which you do not need to worry about. And now we will select the title again, and we have minimized the first slide. We can edit the second slide by doing the exact same, as well as the third slide. We also have the option to add another slide, and here we will start from the beginning, from the background color, to the image, and so forth. Let's say we have made a mistake and the slide is incorrect, we will simply hit the cross and we will delete that slide. Moving down, here you can see we can change the height of the slide. We'll set that back to 600 and we will continue. Lastly, in the slider option section, we can change the navigation as well as the autoplay, pause and hover, pause and interaction and so forth. Moving on to the styling section, here we can choose to change the content width of the slides. As you can see, we currently have it set to 66, but if I was to decrease it, we'll see that our width here has changed. As well, if I increase it, it will go more wider. I will set that back to 66, then we will continue. Here we can insert our horizontal positioning. If we set it to the left, the text will go left. If we set it to the center, the text will be centerized. This is the same for the vertical align, the vertical position, as well as the text alignment, as you can see here. Next, we will move on from the slides to the title. Here we can change the spacing of the title, as well as the color and the typography. By selecting the typography option, you will see a window will expand. Here we can change the font of the text, the size of the text, the weight. We are able to transform it to uppercase and lowercase, we can change the style of the text, as well as add a decoration, and change the line height and letter spacing. Moving away from the title, we have come to the description, which is the exact same. We can change the text color, or we can change the typography settings. Moving away from that, we come to our button. Here we can choose the size of the button, as you can see it is small, but we can change it to any size we prefer. Next, again, we have our text color and our typography, which we can edit. Scrolling down, we have come to the last section, which is the navigation. This, you will not need to worry about, as it is already set up for you. Moving on to the advanced section, we can ignore this tab, as again, this is set up for you. You do not need to fiddle here. That is how you would edit the three main elements on the front page. We will simply use our mouse cursor to navigate across the site, and we will simply select an area we wish to edit. If we wish to edit a section, we will select the edit section. If we wish to edit a column, we will select edit column. As seen here. And if we wish to edit a widget, we will simply select the edit widget button. Moving down, I will show you here, we currently have got two columns, as you can see here. That is how you would edit the front page of your website.